Ethiopia with their hands raised up towards God. My question is, God, where were you in all of this that we've gone through? Has anybody ever thought like that? God, where was you? I'm getting ready to attempt to explain the unexplainable. Is that even though man's sin was prevalent, God's word was still being worked out. Let me say it again. Despite the sins of man, God still had a plan that had to be worked out. How was God going to get the people of color to a place where they could learn truth and become his ambassadors? That is a very difficult thing to explain to make common sense to our natural minds. But the Bible goes on to say that all things work together for them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. When I look at the book of Isaiah, amen, 55 and verse 8, the Bible tells me something that I will not be able to explain in detail to bring full understanding to our minds what he is doing. The Bible says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. You and I wouldn't have brought the people from Ethiopia and from the region of Egypt the way that they came. Can I get at least one amen in here? Where's my amen man at? And so we come to understand that as brutal as it might have been, yet God had a purpose. When I look at the scriptures and I see that it says, for as high as the heavens, than the, uh, as higher than the earth, so are my ways than yours. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And so when I see all of this detriment, my heart gets hard, but yet at the same time, God says, don't let it be, get hard, but appreciate where you are today. Because they did come out of Egypt, they did come out of Ethiopia, and look at what we do when we start praising God. Our hands, oh, I wish somebody would get happy and say that sounds like the word of God. But we see here that God does things that don't seem to make sense to us, but it makes sense to his divine plan. Are uh, y'all going to be with me? Some of the tears that you cried had to be cried because God is trying to do something in your life, but your flesh war against the... Oh, I wish I could get somebody to talk to me. There's a lot of times that you go through your most trying moments, but God still has a plan if your love will not depart from him. The Bible says in Genesis 3.15... And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, uh -huh, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Uh -huh. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the plan to transfer the kingdom back to humanity. The plan, the plan, the plan, the great transfer. And that's what I like to use for a thought today, the great transfer. God, amen, had to bring Jesus through 42 different generations to fulfill his plan. Uh, if you look at the history of the Bible, you'll see that many slaves and people were killed and people were maimed and folks had gone through, but all of it was to bring, amen, about the birth of Jesus. I like the genealogy of Christ. Because even in the genealogy, God does not hide the sins of man. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, did you catch that? God did not hide the sins of man. He was saying that I want you to always understand that man cannot be perfect without me. Oh, could I get a praise, somebody? God can, man cannot be perfect without God. For all have sinned and they what? Come short the glory of God. We need to stop trying to measure our sins and understand all have sinned. Uh -huh. All. Somebody say all. all. Look at somebody say that includes you, that includes you, and that includes me. The great transfer. 
God, amen, gave a promise in the garden that I am going to transfer uh -huh, the glory from, amen, the enemy's camp back to my original design. Tell your neighbor, amen, I was created to be a king or queen, whichever one you are. Uh-huh, nothing shall stop me. Come on, tell me, nothing shall stop me. I am going to be the best of the best. Anybody ever watch that movie, um, The Men in Black? Amen, the best of the best. I'm going to be the best of the best. I am going to be the best of the best. What he began to say and show us that the promise started in the garden, but when you look through the genealogy of Jesus, you see that man's sin it tried to interfere with the plan of God, but sin ain't stronger than God. Hit your neighbor and say, sin is not stronger than God. What God's going to work out in my life, come on, tell them, in my life, God's going to work it out. I, I might not be everything you think I ought to be, but by the grace of God, God's going to make me what he wants me to be because I've been created by the best. The great transfer. So even from the garden, when man sinned against God and gave over his inheritance to the kingdom of darkness, God set out to make a great transfer transfer and in the midst of that transfer there's been some troubling times somebody say transfer. transfer don't you know spirits are transferable anybody understand what I'm saying the spirits are transferable we have a story in the book of Acts where the, they tried to cast out a demon and that demon said listen Jesus I know Paul, I know, but who are you? And that spirit leaped off of them, him, and leaped on them, and they ran naked out of the building. So we see here that spirits can be transferred. Are y'all with me so far? I'm getting ready to take you into deep water. You ready? Uh -huh. Put on your scuba suit because we're getting ready to go a little deeper. Amen. And you got to catch revelation. Is that all right? In the book of Matthew Chapter 27, verse 28, and the Bible says, And they stripped Jesus and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a thorn, a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head with the intent to do him harm, to cause blood to ooze out of his temple. Uh-huh. They, they, they made him extra sharp so that when they squeezed it down on his head, it would hit his temples. But the miracle facet of this whole thing is, even though those thorns hit his temple, he did not bleed out where they were. God is so awesome, no man can take my life. He said, I lay down my life. I don't care what you do. Oh, you ought to get bad enough in the Holy Ghost to say, I don't care what man can do unto me. There's nothing that can happen to me unless God approves it. Uh -huh. That's why I can handle what I'm dealing with because God got his hands. Hit somebody and say, there's a grace on you. There's a grace on you. There's a grace on you. Because if the grace of God had not been on you, you could not handle what you're going through. There's a grace on you. Can I finish teaching it to you? And when they had plaited the, 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 the crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a wreath in his right hand. Uh -huh. And they bowed the knee before him. And they mocked him. <laughs> Have you ever been mocked? Uh, come on, tell your neighbor, neighbor. The closer you get to Jesus, the more they're going to talk about you. Oh, come on, tell somebody else, the closer you get to Jesus, the more they're going to talk about you. But you ought to be bad enough. Come on, tell them you ought to be bad enough that if they talked about Jesus, they can talk about me because there's a grace on my life. I can handle the, I can handle the backstabbing because there's a grace on my life. <laughs> Let me finish. And they mocked him and, and saying, Hail, king of the Jews. And they spit upon him. And they took the reed and they smote him on the head. 
And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off of him, and they put on his raiment on him and led him away to crucify. Led him away to crucify. Somebody holler out, crucify. Come on, holler that out again, crucify. Uh, they did not get the revelation that even though it looked bad, they were in the plan of God. Oh, I wish I could somebody catch the revelation for themselves. Even though sometimes it looked bad upon you, God is working out his plan in you. Oh, can I get somebody just, just for a moment to get away from your emotions so you can understand that no matter how you're feeling, God got a plan for you, a plan to bring you to an expected end. You shall not fail, but you shall overcome. Oh, can I get somebody to holler at me? You shall overcome. The Bible says they led him away to crucify him. Many would have thought you would have given up, but look at you. You're still here. You're still praising God. You're still saying, thank you, Jesus. Whew. Look at here. And this is where I get the revelation. The Bible says, and as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene. Simon by name. Him they compelled. Him they compelled. Him they took by force and had him to bear the cross of Jesus. <laughs> Somebody say, to bear the cross of Jesus. Oh, what a privilege it is. Huh? What's the rest of the word? She's all in the message. I'm not caught off guard. To carry everything to God in prayer. Say it one more time. Oh, what a privilege. It is to carry everything, everything, everything. To carry is a cross. To carry is a burden. To carry is a, not easy. To carry is tiresome. But oh, what a privilege. Oh, I get somebody to holler at me after a while. Oh, what needless pains we bear. Huh? And in that revelation, when I look at the story, I see the weakness of Jesus. I see Jesus at his weakest moment. And yet a man of color shows up. Y'all didn't catch that. Did you catch that? It is amazing. Hit your neighbor and say, ain't nothing happening by accident. <laughs> Come on. Oh, can I just get, get this clap with me for a minute here? <laughs> nothing is happening by accident. It is strange that all of a sudden a man of color shows up out of nowhere. But my Bible says back in Psalms that they shall come out. They shall come out of Ethiopia, amen, with their hands lifted up. So here we have a man of color compelled to bear the cross at Jesus' weakest moment. Can I talk to you for a second? Oh, that God is so mindful of us that he has not forgotten your labor of love. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on and get into the, into, into the scenery of what I'm trying to draw here with my invisible pen through the Holy Ghost is that when he called, amen, when they called a man of color, God knew what he was doing even before the man got there that it didn't happen by accident. <laughs> Encourage somebody right there next to you right now. What you going through right now it is not by accident. reason I spoke about the transfer of spirits in the beginning of my message is because when Jesus was at his weakest moment, a man of color grabbed the cross. But when he grabbed the cross, there was a transfer.
when Simon grabbed the cross, being connected to Jesus, the glory, the suffering, and the pain was transferred. You say, well, how are you coming up with this? Well, my Bible says in Luke 8, 45, and Jesus said, who touched me? Many was touching, not knowing who he was, and did not receive no miracle. But this woman touched him who knew who he was. And there was a transfer of the glory that was in him through the garment of his clothes that changed that woman's life. Somebody say, just a touch. Just a touch. 